in what service. And the first question we want to ask you is, would you hire you or somebody like you with your attitude and behavior if you were employment officer of some corporation? Or maybe more than that, maybe just a uh, small business that could fail or succeed depending on your type of service. Could you, could they make a profit if it depended upon you? I've observed, I've been on some jobs and I've seen some people that would have actually almost bankrupted the company if they were dependent upon them to make a profit. Some have taken the attitude that I come to work for a paycheck and that's all I want. If I get my paycheck, that's fine. But we need to be careful that the company makes a profit. We should be conscientious to see or want or desire anyway or reckon, realize that if the company doesn't make a profit, then we don't have a job. And we don't want to make, do the least we can because the company needs to make more than just your paycheck off of you. Because the light bill has to be paid, see? Maintenance has to be paid. There's mailing expenses. Restrooms cost money. So I'm saying that if you were an executive in charge of hiring, or if you owned a small business, would you hire somebody like you? Hire somebody acceptable service. Why well, let us know First Corinthians four and two that it is required first of all that a servant or what's he called? Steward. Steward. Steward is one who has the oversight of other person's goods. A steward is a hired servant in charge of someone else's material. Would you make a good servant, a good steward? Now, of course, we're getting to the spiritual portion. That's what we're getting to. But we want to start out with the natural application because that's the way the Lord does. One parable he gave, he said it was reported unto him that you have been derelict, that you've been careless in handling my stuff to give account of yourself. And the servant began to say within himself or the steward to dig I'm ashamed, to beg I'm ashamed, to dig I'm not able, or whatever else. And he was trying to figure a way how he could make it out of here because he had been unfaithful with another man's goods. And so he began to pass out favors with goods that were not his that he might secure himself in the future. And we wouldn't want to do like that, but we find people that are on the job purloining, and the Bible said not purloining. And purloining, of course, means converting to your own use someone else's material. Stealing, in other words. You don't do that, do you? I've done that before. I took it back to when I got saved. All little screws and bolts and nuts. I had a box of them and I took them back. I told you all, some of y'all remember I told you about that. I got ready to go back. I had to go by the, an armed guard to get back in there. And I didn't have a pass because I wasn't working there any longer. And I said, I'm going to go up here and tell this guard on this federal reservation here that I've been taking some stuff away from there. Yep. We deliberately take pencils and paper and things like that. Maybe you're in a different situation. We're not supposed to be just trying to stock up our home desk and office with company supplies. Notebooks and little this and all that kind of stuff that was made to be used in the office. We should take a home pump. People think nothing about it. But really, we not prolonging. The Bible said not prolonging. You don't want supposed to do that. But we don't say you do it and they expect you to do it. They don't want you to do it, but they expect you to do it. In some cases, it gets so bad they have to tag it and try to catch somebody. 
There's some things you should not be dealing with at all. They're very, very expensive. Shouldn't do it if it's little. Should take off things off the job. Would you hire you if you were honest as you are? <laughs> if you're looking for an honest or a labor worker, would you hire a you? It's required of a steward that he be found, first of all, be found faithful. Ephesians 6 and 5. 651, 651, I believe it is that it's required that we be obedient as servants. Would you hire you if you were as submissive on your job as you are? You can say what you want to, and we can claim what we want to, but we're not obedient. We're not what we ought to be. We can say we are, but that will argue 15, 20 minutes sometime to keep from doing what somebody told us to do and they're paying the check. Six and five, servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. With fear and trembling lest you miss it in singleness of heart unto the Lord as unto Christ. Not lying service. We work hard and behave ourselves when the boss is looking but when he's gone we we'll put our feet upon the desk. Not lying service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. We're being haven on our job and taking care of it because we are saints. That's why we fear God, not man. And God's eyes go to and fro in the earth, beholding the good and the evil. Yes, sir. And therefore, we're supposed to be doing good, he said, not as men pleasers. So it must be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. And that man your master for eight hours. Or whatever it takes to get the job done. Whatever you, go, you, you agree to, whatever you bargain to. I mean, you're supposed to be obedient. Amen. If you don't want to be obedient, quit. True. And you're saying to God, you ain't got to be just quitting. If you need a job, and you don't quit on pride. Yeah. Or lazy. Yeah. And you don't behave yourself to get fired. Caught sleeping in a restroom. You ever tried that? I've been on a job where they call the restroom the library. I'm going to the library if anybody's looking for me. They can get some book and go in there and read. Bring some time. Hoping they not be missed. Men pleases. Eye service. It's required to serve. They be found faithful. First Timothy 6. If it's in the book, then it's required of us. Yes, sir. It is. And we, some of these things we know already because, you know, a promise is a promise. My word is my bond. We sign out those slips. We know what we expected of us, that we would get out there and do some work. And if we don't work, then, of course, the man's losing money on us, and it's trying hard to fire a man that's that easy. But we shouldn't make the boss wish he had never hired us because of our attitudes. Let as many servants as are under the yoke or under the bondage or under the, uh, uh, shall we say, the um, uh, uh, contract, count your own masters worthy of all honor that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. you can going on the job testifying of salvation and doing things you got no business. Disrespecting the masters, that the name of God, you live up to your testimony on your job. And they that have believing masters, now sometimes, you know, we have, uh, uh, we're working under saints. And we have to be careful to treat them right. Do not put extra stress on your boss if he happens to be a saint. You see, sometimes it can, it can be kind of embarrassing. A boss who is a saint shouldn't have to re reprove or rebuke a man that works under him who is also a saint. You should get as much support or more support from that uh, under uh, worker as anybody else in the plant or in the shop or whatever your happen, job happen to be. 
We've had that situation. Sister Betty, yeah, come to think of it. You used to work under Saint, didn't you? Yes, yeah, sir. Did you give him a hard time? <laughs> work more. Yeah, you didn't want to sing that you were under his wing, did you? For special favors. So, you, you know, that's the way it is sometimes. You know, Brother Tony, he's got a nice little job over there at the prison, and he's got uh, minister, uh, uh, saints maybe that someday may have an occasion to work under him. Or he may have to work under them someday. Who knows? But at the same time, we don't want to get to the place where they're stressing one another. Now, don't do something wrong and expect for your boss to cover for you. That's taking advantage. That's putting them in a bad spot. He don't want to be loud talking to you and, and, and picking on you and calling you into the office because you, after all, you're the brother. Same time, he don't want me to have to overlook your misbehavior and your lack of performance. So the Bible says there's many servants that happen to be under yoke and uh, count their own masters worthy of all honor that the name of God be not blasphemed. And if you happen to have a saint master, let him not despise them. Don't get, uh, don't let jealousy enter into the thing. Pray for your boss. Whether he's not saved, pray, but if he is saved, all the more. Especially the household of faith. And the boss may have to tell you to do something you don't want to do one of these days. And you don't say, oh man, I thought we were friends. You got to tell other fellows to do it and they give you favors, then they're going to they pick it up. Because y'all go to the same church, huh? Because y'all go, y'all both go to the uh, you don't, how come he don't have to do nothing? Hmm? How come he gets all the OT over time? No, don't expect those things. If you have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren. Don't despise the boss. If he's saved, he's your brother. But he's still the boss. And he still has to act like one. Or she. Some men don't like to work on the women, no how. She's a saved woman, let's take advantage of it. That's wrong. See, if you're saved in the heart, you don't even have to be reminded to treat so the supervisor right. They should depend, be able to depend on you. Even if they don't know you at first, but they know you're saved, they should be able to depend on you. Because you're a good worker. Why? Because you're not an eye service person. You are of God. You're working because God said work. You don't want to steal from the company. A day's work for a day's pay is the theme of same employees. The Bible said, teach this, you know. Rather do them service, he said. Let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather uh, do them service. What good for them? Because they are faithful and beloved. Partakers of this the benefit. He says, uh, these things teach and these are. We're probably teaching these things. Yeah. And don't you know we're all servants to some degree? Somewhere, somehow, we are servants. Very few of us in here at the very, very top of the pile don't have to obey nobody. Look, I never an employee or servant, are you? Now, maybe you're a union man. Maybe you're a union steward. That's a hard job for a saint. Just because it doesn't always require quality behavior. It doesn't always require fair behavior. And I wouldn't much want to be a union steward because I might confuse my title <laughs> to, to the glory. But it says, anyhow, if any man teach otherwise, if in case you were a union steward around here and you believe the employees ought to be able to rise up and buck up to the boss. If any man teach otherwise and consent not these wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine according to God, of godliness, he says, then he's proud and he know nothing. Boating about questions and strife words. He said, this is right. He's saying, this is right. And if you want to argue about this, uh, something matters with you. He said, you don't know nothing. Man. We get into the per uh, fifth verse of perverse disputings of men and corrupt mind and destitute of the truth and supposing that gain is godliness. Amen. All I want is another ten uh, uh, cents on the hour. Gain is godliness. Striking. Fussing, quarreling, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. As many servants are under yoke, as many as have masters, in other words, let them count their masters worthy of honor. It'll work out better for you. Business strive. 
and compete. You know, on these jobs, quite often there's a competition. And those folks are just carnal as, uh, yeah, Big Mac or something. And they're climbing. They're trying, always trying to get ahead. And they'll undermine you. They tell a little lie on you, necessarily. They misrepresent you. But saints don't get into that. And then when the boss is gone, they try to overthrow him so they can get his place. We don't, saints don't take part in that. We don't do that. No, sir. Don't forget that that job's a hard job. And you may not do any better if you had it. And maybe you don't need it. Because you may have to reap what you sow. So he says, uh, these things teach. Let us require of a steward they be found faithful. Not wasting things. Not stealing things. Amen. Not, uh, well, you can waste time, you know. You shouldn't be on the, uh, on the job running to your pant. That's not what's required. A day's work for a day's pay plus a little. Because your attitude is better than the rest of them. Right. Now you do want to live. Don't get on a job and kill yourself. Run like a racehorse. That's not what it requires. They didn't ask you to do that. They asked you to put in a good day for a good pay. Sure. And if the pay ain't so good, put in a good day anyhow. Because you save. It's required that you be found faithful. Service, be obedient. First Corinthians, we're going to go here to the seventh chapter. We're to be saints uh, 24 hours a day. Thing I really have to watch our dreams, man. I don't want to dream them bad. See? Have you ever dreamt anything that wasn't right? How did it feel about it? It didn't feel so good. So Lord help us watch what we meditate on in the daytime. Because the enemy could pick on us at night. We don't have full control over our consciousness. Again, would you hire you if you were available? Some of the things, knowing what you know about yourself, is that the kind of employee that you would like to have? Do you come to work on time? Oh, yes. I mean, do you lay off? No. Do you call in sick when you're sick of work and that's all? <laughs> yeah, you sign up for slick leave? Or just take it? If you were working for a small business, would you bankrupt them? Would you be the straw that break the camel's back? Do you lean back and drink coffee and go get some more? And let your work slide? It's required of a steward to be found faithful. What kind of worker are you? You say that don't count. It don't matter. Yes, it does matter. Hey Amen. You're going to get your reports from God. He said you're going to be rewarded according as your work is. And you were working on your job. God told you, there's plenty in this book. I ain't, I'm not going to read everything about servants and masters and things like that. There's, there's so much in here that I couldn't read it. 1 Corinthians 7. Are thou called being a servant? Care not for it, don't like it. But if thou may be made free, that's in Christ, you use it rather. You use it. Use that opportunity to shine. I told one time one of the saints called me up. This is a saint that hadn't had a job steady for a long time, couldn't hold a saint a job because they, you know some folks when they center they can't hold a job. This man had a job for a while and they called me up. And they'd been assigned. Uh, matter of fact, I had a couple brothers doing these things to me. They'd assigned him a job that was menial, didn't care for it. And he felt like he was being treated unfair. And somebody else should have that to do dirty work in a restaurant somewhere. He called up and he wanted to come home. I said, You stay right there. I said, What would you be doing if you weren't cleaning that thing out? What would you be doing? He was sitting on a couch somewhere. I said, No, you ain't got nothing else to do. Stay there and clean it out. Want to walk off? No. Mm -mm. Now you have to develop some tolerance for work. <laughs> and they tell you to clean the restroom, you're a saint. That's right, you don't answer and talk back. 
In most cases, you want to work hard to do that, but sometimes when work falls off, you do that. You don't go out and tell people, that's not my job. Who do I look like, a fool? I'm a monkey on a string, as somebody said. You save, you can do some things that you don't, you know, you can do some things. I mean, take your salvation with you when you go to work. Yeah, have it on the job with you. Take your humility with you. You're not supposed to just be putting up a show when you're in church. Take your salvation with you. You take it home with you, you need it there. When you take it to work with you, it surely makes you a better employee. Any man called being a servant? You don't care for it? You don't care not for it? I'd rather quit. No, that is not what you do. Use it. If thou mayest be made free, you use that, amen, to get some good grace with the Lord. For he that is called in the Lord being a servant is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also he that is called being free is Christ's servant. You're bought with a price. Right, you're serving God. We're not serving men. But yet we are serving men, but we're serving men as if we're not with our service to men, but we're serving men as God, Christ, would have us to do it. That's what he's saying. We are governed by the rules of Christ on our job and in our homes. See? You don't want to work? Don't, well, don't ask for one. But the man sure not going to hire you on any terms other than a day's work for a day's pay. You may not get that, but that's what he's hoping. Servants should be obedient. If you've got believing masters, if you've got a saint for a boss, he might have had something to do with what you get in the job. Or he may not know you was even coming. But he'd be glad when he see you coming. Until he find out that you're expecting all kinds of favors. Let him be the one to lay let me be the one to lay up against the wall. Give me all the gravy jobs. That's right. Put me at the top of the leave list. Make sure I get the 4th of July, Christmas, and all the rest of the good holidays. Because you, I mean, after all, I'm saved. You're supposed to give me the best. No, that's not it. No, when you need somebody and Neil's going to get a whole lot of trouble, you ought to be able to turn it to one of the saints. That job, you, you, you might get some labor problems doing it with some of the other saints, but he can lean on you. And instead of go ahead and do it and get do a favor, you. No, you didn't ask him to do it. Now, why you want to ask me to do it? Why do you want to take advantage of me just because you know me? I knew something else. I thought you saved. He said, well, I thought you saved too. Give me a hand here. All right. Especially if he believed, he said, you wait upon him. He's beloved brother. Mm -hmm. First Peter 2, 18. First Peter 2, anyhow. Called to be in a servant, you don't care for it? That's the difference between a sinner and a saint. And I say you can't hold a job. There's plenty of men that cannot hold a job in, uh, or shall I say, as uh, living in their sinful life. They can't hold a job, there's something matter with them. Either too lazy, too proud, and too busy to do something else. They won't hold a job. They call in late, call in uh, sick, and they're not sick. Come in late, and there ain't no excuse for that. And they can't hold a job because they get fired or cuss the boss out and get mad at him. But when it comes to the saint of God, we got some help. Supposed to. We're supposed to have help. We're supposed to work so and do so good that that man will consider whoever you would recommend for a job there. Amen. If you, listen, you work so, you'd be glad to have the saints. That's right. You ought to be glad to have another one like you. You got any more than that like that over there? Yeah. yeah. Tell them call in. But I wouldn't recommend anybody that's so lazy. I want to, yeah, I want you to come to my job and embarrass me. Where's that guy you recommended there? Oh, he had to go back to the restroom. Oh, he has some business to take care of. Now I'm sick again. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. That has to do with the laws, the right laws of the kingdom that govern our country and cities. For the Lord's sake, be careful what you do. I mean, out there in the society, in the public. 
but obey the law. Whether it be unto the king as supreme, or unto the governors, or unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers. They give you a ticket, go pay it. You should have been careful. Or for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that you with well-doing may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free. We're just as free as anyone else. But not using it for liberty as a cloak of, of maliciousness. But as the servants of God. We are servants of God, saints. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Servants be subject to your masters with all fear. Servants. Not only to the good and to the gentle. But also to the fallen. Now we are not going to run into just good, gentle, sweet bosses all the time. Sure. We've heard about, you know, sometimes they don't treat you right. They're not all, yeah. you'll be rejoicing if you get a saved boss. Sometimes you don't have a saved boss and sometimes they don't do what's just right because they're not governed by conscience but what they can get away with. Sure. But he said, be subject to your masters with all fear, not fearing the master, but with servants of God, who you fear or hold a high respect for God. Not only to the good and gentle, but also to the fallen. I've worked for a fraud boss. I've had a fraud boss. I had one that seemed like he was after me. Old Claude. <laughs> yeah. He talked about my religion, told us we were fanatics, and he didn't know that. He asked me a question. Do you all wear jewelry over at your church? I said, no, we don't wear no jewelry. See, see, he's telling all the brethren, man. That's fine. I finesse this. He ain't doing no work. Is that all you've done? Is that all you've done? I said, no, no more of this. I should never be saying, yeah, he's got enough tray over here. He didn't already finish that. Oh. Wait a minute. What's the matter here? What's he doing? Choosing me. I ain't done that. One thing I did learn, my daddy seen that I know how to work. But you do have some flower supervision sometimes. You do sometimes the boss don't treat you right. And what are you gonna do then? Quit? Not especially when you took your little while to get that job. You didn't pray, pray, Lord, give me a job. Lord, I need a job. I want a job. So the Lord gave me a job. You know, I wouldn't quit that job either because I said, Lord must have been trying to do something for me when he gave me this job. He gave me this job and I was working. He was saying things that had no business. I'd run out of work and I'd stand there, I'd go up there to him and he's the foreman. I want to get some more work. I'd stand there and he'd ignore me and I'd be standing there. I didn't want to say, you fool, who are you standing there for? You've been standing there five minutes. Ten minutes. Well, why don't you go do this? Well, why are you not working? So I reached around. I ran around and found me a broom. And I started sweeping. And I swept and swept. And they could get in trouble for sweeping too. You know, because that's what he told me to do. But my work was done. But I'm just telling you, sometimes you have some flowered bosses. Yeah. You have some bosses that don't know what authority is for. They don't know how they could. Yeah, they, they, there's something matter with them. They flowered. Same way it is with in her home sometime. Some of the sisters have got flowered husbands. All right, sister, say man. <laughs> it's not easy all the time to live with someone who's flowered. It's not easy. Because when they want you to be wrong, you're wrong whether you're right or wrong. You're going to find somebody to make you wrong. That's right. Be careful who you get if you want to get somebody because that's going to be a great influence in your life, whoever you marry. If you don't want to be under anybody, don't marry. And if you do marry, be good and deal with those that are obedient in the faith and those that aren't. Likewise, you wives, and be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word. Maybe some are not going to do unto others as they have it done unto them. That's right. Maybe some are not going to call home when they're going to be late. Sometimes someone might not give you any money. Sometimes they might bop you up against the wall. Who knows? They're not saved, and so they're not governed by the Word of God. And you can't talk back either, in many cases. Not if you're going to be saved. And sometimes you're not saved, don't talk back. Because they're forward. 
That if any of them not the word, they may without the word be won by the good lives, the conversation of their wives. We want to influence our husbands and our wives towards salvation. How knowest thou, O woman, whether thou shalt save thy husband? How do you know whether, O man, you should save your wife? Don't you know you're supposed to live right whether you, your, your, your husband's good or not? My cousin, Louise, had a husband. He's much older than mine, but she's holiness. And he had a lady down in the country. And he spent the week in the country and came home on the weekends. And sat on the porch with his real wife. Yeah, be, you go by there and he'd have his pipe in his mouth and they'd both be sitting on the porch. On Saturday evening. Monday morning he'd gone back down the country to his other. She said, I know he ain't no good. But he's mine. That's what she said. They didn't fuss the whole weekend throwing shoes, possum, accusations. No, she was saved. Some of you knew sister folks. Living example of a saint. She took it. It didn't hinder her. That's when I saw her, she was sitting in the rest home. Down on a court of fountain. Fountain in uh, Grand, I think it is. Still say, a little feeble minded, but still say, that's right. Husband gone on to his reward, whatever it's going to be, but she was still say, to the good and also to the fraud. If we feel like that we have to be treated right to keep a job, God don't say that. You sang that song, What Would Jesus Do? What Would Jesus Do? Those that have taken abuse have had more effect to save their companions or their bosses than maybe anybody else. Taking abuse from someone would affect them more maybe than um, uh, your uh, testimony or track. They believe that's something to you because when people mistreat you, they kind of got an idea that you're doing it. And they use you and you don't crack. They don't crack. You don't crack under mistreatment. People say if you can go cry somewhere and be pitiful, but don't crack. Not spiritually. And the boys tell me, Carl, if I was you, I'd hit him right between his eyes. That's what they told me, talking about Claude. If I were you, I'd hit him right between his eyes. I said, no, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I'm not going to hit him between his eyes. And they told me some guy that grabbed him in his car, picked him up for a deal in the shop. Scared me. He said, he let him alone, too. They let him alone, too. He was still working. I said, well, now, you don't grab him in the car, either. No, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Things don't have to go your way for you to do right. It don't have to be treated right to do right. If you have to be treated right to do right, then you got a son for a supervisor. Whatever his condition is, you're going to have a problem. You'll be arguing and lose all the joy. The glory will go out of your soul and you won't enjoy nothing about salvation. The Bible says here, the good and the flower, the saved and the unsaved. You're not a servant to men anyhow. You're a servant to God and you're letting your light shine. In this case, now what kind of boss uh, uh, employee are we? Hmm? Are we a good employee on the job? And can people feel like that your boss treats you just as good as he treats anybody else, and you know he don't? Can you still be sweet? You see, we need, may need to get a little something deeper. Something better in our soul. Sometimes we don't want to do it. Well, I know that's not right. I know it's not right. It can't be right. It can't be right. It don't have to be right. Christ stayed saved. And he wasn't treated right. Paul was saved and he wasn't treated right. I mean, just don't get to a breaking place where the enemy got already figured out how he can get you. He already got you figured where he can push you to where you, you, you'll give up. Maybe fight. Or smart talk somebody. Uh-uh, you ain't going to break me that one. I'm, 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 let me go pray. I'm going to pray. Take my lunch period. I'm praying through my lunch period. I'll bring my lunch back tomorrow. I'm going to eat heaven today. I'm going to pray. I'm going to get something else. You tell him, Lord, take the phone. When he's be railing, I take the phone off the hook, you know, as it were. I said, Lord, listen to this man. I'm not going to quit now. After all, the saints have been praying for me to get this job. Now I got the job, and I'm going to crack under pressure. I'm going to I quit. I ain't going back no more. Mm -mm. No, I sure didn't enjoy it, though. No, 
No, you don't enjoy it. Doing the very best you can, and people almost spit on your efforts. He said, you lied. He said, I lied to get that job. I said, no, I told you that's what I did. Now. But I worked hard. And when I did my job come up to go to the post office, when I started to leave, they called me in office and tried to get me to stay there. Tried to get me to stay. Told me they were going to give me a 50 cent raise on the hour. I know I can't pay much at the post office, but I'll give you this and this. So, and they'd already fired Claude. They already fired him. They fired him, and the folks around us telling me, finish this by, say it to the Lord. Workers, quoting scripture. Say, yeah, they knew. They figured God didn't, got rid of Claude. Claude didn't do right. But and the job opened up, and I said, well, my probation's over. I'm getting out of here. I was going to hell out. But I'm trying to say, he said, to the good and to the forward. And I didn't say too long, but I needed to go through something. Yes. And the Lord said, there's no temptation is pleasant. It's not joyous. He, if it's joyous, it's not temptation. Sometimes we've got to prove ourselves something to God that meant for him to, uh, to, to bless us. He well, don't want to trust us with things we're going to break under pressure. We're not supposed to be breaking under pressure. I mean, it would not if he said he would not no more come upon us than that we were able to bear. But he will with the temptation make a way of escape. We don't have to break under pressure. Not, not if we keep praying. Lord, <laughs> I need a little break here. Sister Butler pray. She said, I pray for him. Lord, don't let him be destroyed. That's what she prayed for me on the job. I think wife will tell her how I was responding, how it was affecting me. She said, Lord, don't let him be destroyed. And I wasn't destroyed. Later on, after I had left that, and he left there, he'd see me on the job. Oh, oh, come on. <laughs> My old time friends. <laughs> Frogger to the bone. A frogger ball. Didn't know no man, no, been, no more been the boss than a child has trying to bake a cake. I didn't know how to turn the oven on there. That boy didn't know nothing about that. Can we be a good employee? Can we go or be on time? Can we be chosen? Some of us say, you know, we have a chronic uh, problem with the clock. I'm talking about the clock, too. I'm not talking about circumstances, situations where you can't uh, get up, be on time. But how many of us are late to work as often as we are at Sunday school? We're in a place where we start in church with half the congregation, and over half the congregation live right here in town. Over well, half the congregation can be here in 10 minutes from the time they get up from their supper table. Can be here. What is an attitude and a problem? Now, would you hire a person with an attitude problem on being late and on time? That's how people do real good work, but they won't be on time. There's some people very good at excusing themselves, but they won't be on time. That's their attitude. They don't need to. If, what's, what's the, if you didn't, listen, if they wouldn't dock you on the job, you wouldn't be on time either. Are you conscientious? Are you obedient? Now that's saying something to say I'm obedient. Can you submit? Let's go to Malachi 1 and let's conclude this. Are we a quality servant? Are we a a servant in demand. Are we balanced out in the Lord? So we obey your masters. Not with our service as men pleasers, but as unto the Lord. In the sixth verse, a son honoreth his father, and a servant honors his master. If I have then be a father, where's my honor? Why are you withholding your honor? And if I be a master, where's my fear? God's all those things, and in our service, he's those things. 
Although he don't get up and boast to us and brag to us and, and shake his fist in our face, God is our Father. He's all, all, most of these admonitions here, it says, as unto the Lord. Why unto the Lord? Because the Lord said, do it. When we submit ourselves in our homes, like we're supposed to be, as, as unto the Lord. Why? Because the Lord said, do it. Well, if my husband was Jesus, I could get along with him a little bit better. Maybe not. He didn't stay home much. He didn't lay in any food. He didn't have a bed. You know you don't want him. You'd be a father, you'd be a controversial fuss with Jesus for your husband. You didn't have much money, you didn't have no money. Now, you know you all don't want your husband to have no money. You ain't got 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 no money. No. Money. no. But he, it's his word. He said, you teach them to... Oh, hmm? You all teach them to obey all these things that I have told you. He says, a son honors his father and a servant his master. Now, we call Jesus master and we call him Lord. We're responsible. We don't take these things lightly. We're supposed to be good servants on our jobs because he says so. Where's my honor? See, God gets honor when we do what he tells us to do. Because then we let the light shine and that glorifies the Father in heaven. Where's my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts, are you priests that despise my name? And where, for we despise your name, you've offered polluted bread upon mine altar. You've offered less than satisfactory offerings. You say, wherein have we polluted thee? That you say the Lord's of the table, the table of the Lord is contemptible. That's what you say. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? What do we offer God? I mean, what kind of service are we giving him with servants? He said, it's evil for you to offer up all this. Yeah. What service are we, or why, how are we offering service and what are we giving God? Do you think it's all right to just do whatever we please? Well, I come and get some money in the plate in the morning. We take a dime, flip it in the plate, or fold it all up three times and put it in the plate. So, well, I know anybody going to say that to me about it. But God knows what you got. He was sure he looked at the, uh, the Mark 12, 43, I believe it was about the three nights. The woman put her money in, and he knew what it was. You think she shook it in the air first and held it around? No, I wouldn't if I only had three mites. We acceptable service. Now, nobody's telling you what you have to do. Nobody's checking you. Amen. We're not demanding everybody get a receipt. And you've got to come up to a certain amount. But God knows. And he can withhold the blessing. Because you're withholding that which is right. He says you're offering a polluted service. All right. You offer the blind for sacrifice. Now they're supposed to give, when you offer them to God, he's a great king. You're not supposed to give him no blind. It's supposed to be a blameless offering. What's it? A, a, a spotless lamb of the first year. That lamb that you offer God was a symbolic of Christ himself. You don't offer him any polluted offering, but they were doing it. I mean, if I've got to get rid of one of these things, I'm going to get rid of this crippled one over here. And they offer up a cripple sacrifice, a spotted sacrifice, a sick sacrifice. And that you say, that, uh -huh, he says, you're offering up the lame and the sick. Is that not evil? Are we offering up lame and sick sacrifices to God and expect him to take it? Is that what we're doing? Hmm? Are we giving him half service or, or running around in circles? Are we insisting on that we be treated right before we do what we're supposed to be doing? Are we have pride in our hearts? Division? Malice toward our brothers and sisters? That's, and then go before God? That's, that's polluted sacrifice. He said, I don't want you to do that. Let me give me the blind things and it's not evil. You offer me the lame and the sick, is that not evil? I'll tell you what you do, you offer that to your governor. That's right, when they send you the bill for your in, uh, yearly income tax, uh, tell them you ain't going to give them that until next year. Tell me, oh, you charge too much, your rate's too high, and you ain't giving him that much. He said, you try it with your governor. More than that, you try it with the king, try it with the, with the, with the, the, uh, the great eternal revenue. Tell him that the rate's too high and you ain't giving that much.
He said, you do, it to your, you, you, you do better with your political uh, leaders than you are doing me. I'm a great God. Offer now to your governor and see if he'll be pleased with you. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person? Stay for the Lord of hosts. But yet we do, and offer of the Lord a crooked and crippled sacrifice, and still say, I thank God for my salvation. Maybe you don't have any. Maybe he's tired of his plea. Crippled sacrifices. Maybe you haven't had nothing for it. Maybe you haven't been saved for years. And you get used to just offering up in your old trash. Don't have prayer. Won't fast. Won't submit. Can't be obedient. Can't keep the word of God. Won't keep the word of God. Got attitude against it. He said, you offer to your governor to see if you take that. You still, and still be gloriously saved. Mm -hmm. And not praying about our sacrifice. Not praying about our service. Mad about it. Upset about it. Don't want to do it. Thank God for my salvation. What kind you got? Well, what kind of offer? What, kind of, what, 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 what do you offer now? What kind of servant are you? What kind of servant are you? Grace is like a fountain. It turned off and on. Sometimes you think it's on. It's off and gone. That's why you have so much trouble. The grace is gone. Offer it now to the governor. He would give that kind of service. We want to offer that up to Sister Ruth. Now, she's a mild-minded person, but she might tell you, this ain't no count. I don't want it. And God tells you that, too. I don't want it. I, don't want, I want what I ask for. If you can give me what I ask for, then you get nothing. You get no credit. You're going to be rewarded according as your work shall be in the life now and in the life to come. Now, you can do an Ananias of fire and give a half an offering, a no offering, and claim you gave it all. Here we go. I'm getting down to the end here. We won't think it over that God knows. We need to be conscious and stay prayed up enough that we can feel that our conscience is working. We could come to church and won't come to church because we feel like we've done enough. Uh-uh. When you've done all you've done, you're yet unprofitable servant. You have not done enough. He said they shall still bring forth in the fruit in their old age. Still bring it forth. Why? Because we have no time to spare. Amen. Sit around coasting on in the heaven. I'll coast from here. I've done so good, I've been so uh, uh, fruitious, I've been so productive, I mean, that I'll, from here I'm going to just quit petting and I'm going to coast right on in. And I said, no, you ran short. <laughs> Your bike fell over about uh, three or four miles shorter to go because you wouldn't pedal. There's some people that actually cannot be in service because they can't. They don't have the physical strength. They don't, and some just don't press. We can do all we know to do. I mean, uh, to get to heaven, uh, he said, we're unprofitable. We ought to make it. I mean, just decide we ain't coming in. Now. If we hinder, that's one thing. But to decide, I'm not going to do it. Sometimes you're so beaten, the Lord might, by grace, let you, you know, get by with something. But the Holy Ghost don't excuse you, you're not excused. But nobody can go up and tell the Lord, I've done all I can. If you haven't. I'm coasting on in from here on, Lord. If you don't like it, well, then that's the way it's going to be. God gave us for the press. He gave the woman with the rheumatic credit for the press she made, not for how much she had. The fact that she was pressing. She pressed to please God. She wanted to give something. And I said she gave all she had. God knows whether that's all she had or not. She pressed. Yes. And that's what it was. The woman that got touched, uh, the hem of his garment, she was pressing. Now you can't press and relax at the same time. True. Offer it now to your governor. And see if he'll accept it. Now, if you were Christ, would you hire you? <laughs> if you were Christ, uh, would he, you be profitable in the kingdom? Would he use you for witness? Could he use you as an example? In whatever state you are, could he use you for an example? If you're very sick and you're still pressing, could God use you for example for folks who are very sick? Hmm? If you have an unsaved husband who don't treat you right, can God point you out to other women that have unsaved husbands to be an example? Uh, what kind of servant are you? Amen. If you're a child, 
Maybe you are just in your adolescence. Maybe you're 17 year old. Could God use you in your service as an example to other 17 year olds? This is what you ought to be doing. Look at this child. You're a steward. You're a servant. Are you an example of someone in your situation? Is how you ought to behave yourself. Oh, I have to drive 50 miles to church. Are you an example? I know someone who drives 70 miles. Detroit's father <laughs> from the church in Columbus. 90 miles? Okay. See? Could the Lord use you for example? How are you serving? You see, sometimes we want to take our circumstance and use it to come short. I say, uh oh. No, sir, don't excuse that. That's weak, and the devil will use that. We don't want to take our circumstances and use it to come short. Don't come short. God knows what's expected of us and what we can do. He knows what we can do. So when we decide to quit, that's different. If we get whipped out the battle uh, because we don't have the grace we ought to have, well, we ought to get some more grace. We've got an altar. We've got brethren who's willing to pray. Someone who's concerned about you. And we ought to be a right servant. Don't decide to be less a servant than you ought to be. There's something we say we can't do and I won't do it. Well, uh, you're going to do that without seeking help from God? And no, none of us can make heaven without the help of God. True. None of us can do that. We all need to. That's why we need to keep praying. Amen. We need to keep on praying. People think that they can make it on their own and they made a sad mistake. You have to pray and ask God to help you. Amen. He's the giver of grace. He's the one that enables us. Amen. We have come this far by faith. So the Lord help us. It's required of a steward, first of all, that he be found faithful. Are you supposed to do are you sitting under a tree somewhere waiting for whatever to come by? And we already been whipped out the battle. And we said, I promised him that I would serve him until I die. And we already been whipped out. And we already been defeated. We didn't know it was going to be this hard. I wouldn't have started out. Not really. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. God's service to get on the highway. But right down the middle of it, if it costs tears. And it has cost many of the martyrs tears to keep making it, keep on making it. Sometimes we make our own battle hard. That's right. Make it hard. So the Lord bless us. Amen. You're good servants of God. You can make it if you can take it. Can you take it? Do we have a number? Rod, quit yourself like men. Praise God. Get in the battle, thank God, and give the devil a way to go. Amen. We don't want to get around feeling soft by ourselves and lose out. Anybody that feels sorry for us, let the Lord feel sorry for us. Because he knows. He knows. Nobody said it's going to be easy. Come on, Sister Faith. That song she sang. No bad roses. No roses. Didn't promise you no roses. You might get the thorns. They come with the roses. Maybe the roses got blown off in the last test. Maybe the last test blew all the roses off. There you go. We got thorns left. We're going to make it on a while until we get back to springtime. Thank God get the roses out again been a while since we heard those roses. I mean, if we insist on roses all the time, you just, I'd be sadly disappointed. That goes for all of us. When I get the thorns, I just have to take it. Why? Well, I'm not going to get the next test. I mean, I'm going to make it next test. I'm going to go through this. I'm going to make heaven. Thank God I'm going to have to make it through the test. All right. So let the billows roll, young folks. We sing let the billows roll. The first billow knock you out the tree and off the Let the billows roll, huh? Sometime when it seemed like that it's blacker than the midnight. 
in the good times, praise his name. And in the bad times, just do the same. We ought not even pat our foot to that song. We're going to get whipped out in the first wave that rolls over us. Thank the Lord for these good inspirational songs. I enjoy it. Oh, what do we have to be like Sister Jill? <laughs> Most of them she sang, she took care of me. Amen. You know, I uh, sometimes lay up in my prayer place and up in my strip, and I, I think about that one. Sometime when it seemed like it's dark at the midnight, God expects you to keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. Thank God you can't win if you quit. Amen. Maybe it is dark at midnight with pressing the dark. Amen. The sun will be around in a minute, in a little bit. You got, you got to keep on pressing. If the devil can find a test he can break you on, he'll break you on it. And uh, you'll know the last one you, uh, last one you won. That'd be it. If you're going to make it, you've got to make it all the way. Now, where's your fight at? Where's your determination? Wait a minute. Somebody asks you to take a city, you try it. But all he's doing is trying to take your spirit. The Bible said, better is he. They may control his spirit than he that can win a city. All right, let's stand. See a place where you slack off on your servant and tell God that you have to do without that part. I'm not going to do it. Let's consecrate and get that done. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me, but we've got to call on Christ. Lord, help me to move up into this position so I can look back on it as another victory instead of a defeat. Sing, listen. All are going to win. When I roll that casket up, let a victor be in there. Well, Tim, my work on earth is done. I'm going to get the victory. What kind of a servant are we? Have we given up already? Well, my eyes are going to be closed in death. My eyes will close in death. Work on, my God. Oh, Father. In the good times, Lord God, help us to praise His name. Yes, we're going to be dead after a while. As grievous as it may seem, we're going to be dead after a while. Don't let me look back and see a victory I could have won that have kept the chain together. But I lost it. And I can't make it over. Keep on pressing. Amen. Wait till the pressure lets up a little bit. If you fight, it's a good fight. You'll get better now. Follow on, maybe. Let us thank you. Listen. 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 We've seen the saints go. go. We've seen them go. Sometimes it seems awfully tragic to lose our loved ones and friends. But God has given us enough grace and enough sense to know that we're not going to live forever. And so when they die, we grieve a while, and then we go on about the business and keep on praising God and serving the Lord. And we think of those that have been rolled up here. You know? Sister Butler, you know, way back for her. We roll them up here. They're dead in that casket. Take them out and roll them up. If we just get some film clips and just roll them up, 
you know, clip all, everything out, just them coming up. Get about 10 or 15 of them after a while, we'd see how a certain life is. And why we've given up so early, so easy. When we know that it is gonna have, we're going to have to have the victory when it comes rolling up here. That's it. That's it. Now, we can't quit on God and have the victory when they roll that casket in. The choir's singing, but they can't sing in heaven. Sound good. I do. There's something about this glorious about the saint's funeral. You realize that? We don't want nobody to die, but there's something glorious about the funeral. When they sigh. Sister Carter. Sister Butler, brother. Butler. And we've had Sister Walker. You know what I mean? Sister Jill. Sister Green. Keep on naming them. We you probably go back and recommend maybe about 20 of the saints have died since I've been in the church of God. But I don't know who's going to step up next and take their turn. It might be me. But Lord have mercy. I don't want to have been leaning against the wall in my last 20 years, 15 or 5 years, just messing around and expect to have good grades when I haven't put no effort in it. Matter of fact, you know, if you don't go forward, sometimes you go back. If you don't talk right, you talk wrong. That's right. If you start thinking vanity, you'll be doing vanity. If you get upset with the way, then uh, the way will be upset. The Lord help us to realize that we've got to keep a good report. Amen. Keep a good report as we go. By faith, the elders obtain a good report. Just keep flesh out the way. If flesh is in the center of our will, then we're not going to be able to do what God wants us to do because the Word of God is not going to justify our murmuring and complaining. Go ahead and sing another verse. Don't mention that too much. Well, let's resume the battle if you have to quit. Sister Mark, sister. All work on, on and on. I'm tired of working on, work on. Earth is done by the living grace of God. I will labor. Yes, some way up ahead. Keep on, press on. There's clear, pure water. Praise God. Work on, all along, till my work of earth is done. I the living grace of God. I will labor on. I will keep on press. Press on. It's hard sometimes. The enemy tempt me sometimes. He tell me to do some other, some other kind of way. Oh Lord, but heaven is too precious. All right. Anyone here feel like they need the altar? Don't go home needing the altar and lay up awake all night. Would you need some special help? Let's don't mess around with the devil. Shove us off the base. Throw us out. If you need help. You've been having troubles and problems. Don't, don't, don't try to handle it yourself. That's God's business. You need to just bring it to God. The altar call is here for a particular reason. Amen. Don't be defeated, whipped, and laid all beat out. Another week or two because you didn't get your help after the Lord told you to get it. You didn't get it. All right. Sing another verse, and if that takes care of it, if everybody go home unsatisfied, that's your choice. Go ahead. You need to take care of anything. You need to take care of anything. Talk about those saints believe in closing their eyes in death. They believe in closing their eyes in death. They sing that. And they're dead but now too. If you need to take care of something, let's take care of it. Work. Oh. 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 Sister Smite, you gonna work? What you gonna work? Here, here, here. Right. Just 
я обняла. Draw nigh unto Christ, he said, he'll draw nigh unto thee. Cutting corners on the Lord. We don't want to fight a sham battle. The enemy, the enemy knows. Thank God when he's rebuked, he knows when he's rebuked, and he knows when you just been hesitating and messing around. He knows when he's received a stinging rebuke, and he's got to get back because God says so. But he knows when he don't have to get back because you say so, because you don't mean it. There ain't no strength in your rebuke. A half-hearted rebuke. A gentle rebuke. Amen. A rebuke for now. So the Lord help us. Thank God to be faithful. You need to check it out. Well, let's come on. Let's check it out. And you do. Let's pay the price and get the prize. Peace. Peace. That kind of service you've been giving God, would you be satisfied to give it to your other rulers? Of the, of the uh, natural government, would you be satisfied? Do you think they'd take it? That which we're offering up to the Lord, the service and sacrifice we're giving Him, is it suitable for a great king? The Lord said, I am a great king. And I'll be glorified among the Gentiles. And how about you? We won't glorify Him and say we're saved. Partial service. Won't repent. It needed. Had problems for months. Won't repent of it. Won't straighten it out. We deal with the Greek king. King Jesus. The owner of heaven and earth. And creator. All right. You don't look around at somebody else to see what they're going to do. Uh-uh. You don't do that. You'll lose out. You check your own spirit. And get right with God. Don't look for somebody else because you'll follow somebody else and line up in hell with them. And they might make it to heaven and leave you hanging around in hell. Checking somebody else. That's one way we know that we're not really genuine. When we're worried about somebody else and what they're going to do. Let's get it straight for ourselves. Not we want to be a church. We want to have a church with some power. We don't know why this test is coming for. We don't want all these things laying underneath. We try to pray over them and get some help for somebody. We don't want things laying underneath. We want to get things straightened out. Be running smooth. When the prayer goes up, God says the answer come down. Amen. People depend on our prayers and we're playing games. We don't have the charity that we should have. The humility that we should have. So the Lord help us, praise God, to be what he wants us to be. You may be seated. If you have to go, go.
Have we decided to coast the rest of the way? Lord God, we're going to have to pray. Lord, help us to be a help. Left stand. Let's get the Lord's attention on our account. I believe that I, I believe that. If I didn't believe that, I wouldn't brought it up. <laughs> Often embarrassment, things like that. I give him a chance to get it straight now. But I believe that. Good employees. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some of us may yet fall in that situation. Let's do a good job. Amen. All right, was there anything that need to be said before we go? All right. But then all right. 
Sometimes it's necessary to realize that. All right. Um, sister. Felicia, uh, if you see a book like that, get it to her, please. We, all right. Um, yes. All right, yes. All right, who wants to commit for the dessert? Raise your hand, if you will. Bring some. All right, we do want to continue to remember Brother Roger. We, Lord, can stand him up if we'll get together before the Lord in our attitudes is undergird him. Praise the Lord. Thank God. I appreciate your prayers for me. I'm sure he appreciates all the prayers. Most of us are praying, but we don't just make it routine. Amen. Let's pray hard to expect something. God can do it. Yes. With glory. Yes. Who? No, I always talk about him today. Uh -huh. the, the minister. Is he a minister? All right. His older brother, he's a minister in Chicago, yes, pastor. No, I didn't know it. All right, Elder Gordon lost his brother. All right, I don't think he... All right, good. They're coming along okay over there, Brother Dale. Give his love to the saints. Anything else before we dismiss? All right. All right, Sister Beverly, dismiss us, please.